Ahoy there! Welcome! I, I'm pumped. I am pumped today. So excited because I've got a little piece of Lego history here. Yeah, it is awesome. Uh, but I wanted to start with the unboxing because, well, they put these little fragile stickers all over it. And to me, that's hilarious because, like, you pick it up and you shake it. I can hear the rattling parts, you know, and that's hilarious to me because that means this has travelled halfway around the world through I don't know how many hands with every person who held it or picked it up going, not me, I didn't do it, no, it was the other guy, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I don't know why that fascinates me, but I find it hilarious. They have taken a few steps to really... Uh, protected here. Uh, it's bubble wrapped. It's got, well, this is what it is. This is what we're talking about today, right? And, oh, oh, a little letter, um, other packaging materials. I don't know. What are people doing unboxing videos? I don't get them. Um, yeah, l l let's get on with the really cool, exciting part and just build, eh? Let's do it. This really is part of Lego history because the story of Lego starts over a century ago in 1916 when old Kirk Christensen started the company up. Now he buys this workshop. He's a carpenter at this point in time. Hasn't even thought of making Lego as a plastic bricks yet. That comes much later. It starts out as just carpentry, wooden toys for kids, including... In about 1930s, uh, the purchase of the first milling machine, the beginning of the release of the Lego Duck. The Lego Duck becomes Lego's longest running product. It was sold for more than 25 years, and there were a lot of versions of the Lego Duck. That's one of the things I'll talk about in a little bit, but what I really want to start with is the telling of the Lego Duck story. Because it goes to the heart of only the best is good enough. Like you've probably seen this little sign here or variations of it around because these are the original signs that were actually put up inside the original Lego workshops and basically it was the company motto. And back to the duck story. The Lego ducks got three coats of lacquer before they went out to customers. That's what Old Kirk thought was the best way to do it. And so Godfrey one day, he's working in his father's workshop, and he's thinking to himself, hmm, do they really need three coats of, of lacquer? What about two? I think two's enough, and that's going to save us some money on labour and expenses, and we can get them out to the customers quicker. So this is a good thing. I, I reckon my dad's going to be proud of me. So he does this uh, for a full order and sends them out to the customers, puts on two coats of lacquer, finishes them up, delivers them to the customers, comes back, and proudly tells his dad what he's done. And he expects his dad to be proud of him, except Old Kirk's kind of like, why did you do this? Two coats isn't enough. Has to be three coats. Only the best is good enough. You need to go back to those customers, get those ducks back, bring them back here, give them the final coat, and then re-deliver them. And so this lesson has really stuck with Godfrey. Only the best is good enough, which I think I've said a few times now. But again, these signs are part of Lego history. You will still find them around Lego workshops to this day because it really is integral to what the brand is all about. Let's talk a little bit more about the box design and the instruction design themselves because they're gorgeous. There's a really minimalist, almost Swiss-style design that's informed the choices here. And it's unlike any other branding we've got before. Now, the branding is kind of important because this is the first LEGO House limited edition exclusive. You can see it here on the box there. The previous Tree of Creativity and the Dinos are not considered part of this sub-license. And the eagle-eyed observers will have already noticed that the fact they've titled it number one means we are about to get a number two and a three and a four and many more under the Lego House uh, sub-license, which will all only be available in Billund. You will have to make a bit of a journey to get this. Or just be incredibly lucky like I was. Oh, I am, yeah, I am loving this. I cannot tell you how much I'm loving this duck. As we're building, there's a few things I want to highlight. And 
one of the big things really is the part choices that the designers have made here. Now, there's a little bit of a story to this, uh, but basically one of the big things I love here is the green Technic bricks, lime green Technic bricks. I'm not sure. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm looking over at my parts collection over here. I don't think I've got a single lime green Technic brick here until today. And I'm thinking maybe I should even swap them out because they're awesome and I probably want them at some point in time. I'm not sure what for yet, but you know. Also, we get just such a... And this section here is from Bag 2. It is a bright, multicoloured mishmash. None of this gets seen in the final product, so it is absolutely the chance by the designer to include all those colours for whatever reasons. Um, sometimes it's to mess with a fellow designer who doesn't like a particular colour, and just making sure that that colour remains used and in the LEGO colour palette. And, and all in good fun, of course, but this is the story that Jamie tells um, about the designer, of course, of this particular set. And yeah, that's one of the reasons we've got some of these crazy colours here, because one of the other designers in the studio doesn't like them as much, and all in good fun, of course. Like, like don't get me wrong here, I do love, 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 love the inclusion of all the awesome colours here. It is, is great. In bag five, we build the wings, and I've said it before, I love looking at the design decisions that the designers make along the way in a set, and this is another example. Again, we get those lime green Technic bricks, but the part I really want to point out is the lines on the wing. There are a lot of uh, fan-made Lego ducks, because it's such an iconic uh, Lego, well, uh, part of Lego history that there are a lot of fan-made creations based on this. And it's important to note that in the pictures of the ducks that we do have, it's meant to be a diagonal line here, which isn't hard to create, um, but doing it in a way that is structurally sound and appropriate for a build experience and you could put it in the hands of a child and let them play with, these are all things that need to be considered as a official product that a fan designer doesn't have to uh, make the same decisions, basically. So that's why we get them here vertical. It gives a structural sense, um, keeps the structural integrity going of the wing here in a way that we just wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, and then let's look at how they connect. Let's get them onto the duck here. I don't know, it just slides on in just so easily, so simply there. And yeah, it is masterful in the way that that comes together. And the one for the other side here, let's just take the wing. It makes any necessary repairs later uh, a lot easier too, because that's, well, not necessarily going to stay as, um, well, I could drop it on the floor a few times and bits are going to drop off, right? Kids are expected to do that when they play with their Lego sets, so that's always something that needs to be taken into account for any official set, which is something we're going to talk a little bit more about in uh, the next step when we get to the wheels. Bag 6 gives us the wheels and the base. The wheels are like super duper clever. I mean, the base, it does what it has to do, it's just a very functional, very simple base, but the wheels... It's actually one of those things that you know that the designers have done a lot of testing along the way to, well, get it to work properly. Because it would have been very easy for this to be a straight through axle. You push on one side and the other wheel pops off and nothing connects properly. But that's not the case here. This is really well designed and stays on remarkably well. It also brings us, again, new colours. I believe we've not had these parts, the 2x2 two two quarter round, uh, in this colour red before. This set is the first place that we're getting that. I just love new colours, what can I say? And yeah, it all comes together so beautifully. The front wheels, as they roll along, check this out. Quack, quack, quack. Yeah, loving that. This is just a gorgeous, beautiful set. To recap, this is the Lego Wooden Duck. 
first of the Lego House exclusives available only in Lego House in Billund. Sorry, I know the world's a bit of a mess right now because of certain things and it might be a bit tricky for most of us to travel there to get our hands on it, but that's where it is for now. Lego House has reopened to the public. They're doing everything they can to keep everybody safe. They are uh, during 2020 because 2020 is a mess, we know. And uh, yeah, the wooden duck. Beautiful, going to get pride of place somewhere in this house. Cannot rate it highly enough. I know I said the word beautiful a lot. I'm going to say it at least one more time. It gets, it gets five beautifuls out of me. Yeah. Yeah. Is that too many? I don't know. Six, seven. Yeah. A perfect five out of seven beautifuls from me for the wooden duck. Love it. Yeah. Thanks guys for watching and um, yeah. See you again next time. Cheers. Quack, quack, quack.